Welcome back. In the last video we talked about some of the temperature adaptions that different Australian endotherms and ectotherms have. In this video we're actually going to cover plants and animals. I'll read the actual dot point. It says identify some responses of plants to temperature change. So identify just means we have to name them. But it also says some, so you need to know more than one. If it says identify one response, that means you need to know one. Some means we need to know a couple. And uh, response of plants to temperature change. But first, before we start, you might you know wonder why exactly do plants need to have responses for temperature change? It's, it makes sense for animals because animals you know they have to move around, they have to make ATP, they need enzymes to do that. So if their temperature changes, that means their enzymes don't work as properly. But look at plants. Plants don't look that active, so you might think that plants don't have that much when it comes to enzyme activity. But plants actually have just as much or even more. Uh, enzyme activity than humans. So we have, here we've got a couple of pictures and we can have, the first one is basics of photosynthesis. So photosynthesis actually requires lots of its enzymes to happen. So we need enzymes for photosynthesis, we need, not we, but the plants. The plants also need enzymes to grow as well. So here we have a seed which germinates. So germination means that it's starting to grow. And for it to grow, there are lots of enzymes involved. Just like us, they also produce ATP. So this is cellular respiration. Cellular respiration. And here it actually says 16 enzymatic reactions go from one, one glucose to six carbon dioxide and lots of energy in the form of ATP. That's six and 16 enzyme reactions. So cellular respiration needs lots of enzymes to make that happen. And again, this is a plant cell and it looks similar to a human cell, but different. There are much more, there are many more different enzyme reactions that need to happen to keep this plant cell alive. So many more enzyme reactions. So you can imagine if the if the actual temperature is not ideal for the plant, if there is a problem in terms of it's too cold or too warm, then just like humans or animals, its enzymes won't work properly. So it won't be able to photosynthesis properly anymore, it won't be able to grow properly anymore, it won't be able to, to make energy energy anymore properly, and the cell itself won't be able to keep up, and it'll die as well. So the same reason why we have to keep our temperature the same is also the reason why plants have to maintain a constant internal environment in terms of temperature to make sure its enzymes work properly. So now we're going to identify a couple of different ones, both when it's too cold and when it's too warm. Obviously, plants and trees uh, are a bit different to us. They don't sweat or shiver, but they have different responses to help them cope if it's too cold or too warm. Now, first of all, if it's too cold, there's a couple of different um, responses. So again, you need to remember a couple of these, because you might get a HC exam question asked you to name a few of them. So, for example, delayed is seed germination. So delayed means that it's going to wait for a while. So seed germination just means that it goes from here, so normal, it's just seed, and as soon as it pops out, so here it starts growing, this is seed germination. And delayed seed germination just means it's going to wait a while, it's going to wait until the temperature is optimum for it to start growing. And obviously that makes sense because it needs enzymes to grow properly, so if it's too cold it can't really do anything, it's going to wait until it's proper, the temperature is proper. So delayed seed germination is when it's too cold. Another one is broad leaves. Now when it comes to leaves, these leaves have lots of different uh, reactions that happen inside. So the temperature needs to be hot enough. If it's too cold, it means there's not much sun around. So what it wants to do, it wants to have very broad leaves. So broad leaves refers to the size, the, the width of the leaf. And the reason why that's useful is because you can imagine this here as the sun. If it's broad, it means there's more space, more surface area to warm it up. So you can see here the surface area is being warmed up by the sun. And that means an increase, increase in temp because there's more surface air to warm up. So broad leaves are good when it's too cold because that means there's more warming up that, it, that occurs. They can also die back. So what I mean by die back is this usually happens when it's not, not when it's cold, but when it's extremely cold. What I mean by die back is you can imagine this plant might be this tall. And if it's really too cold, it's actually going to go back to its seedling shape, so back to this. And it's just going to wait until it's good again and it come, comes out again. So it's a bit like hiding almost, sheltering. 
So it goes away from, because if it's too cold, the plant can't survive. So it will go back to its seedling shape. So it will die back to its seed until it's good enough to come back out again. So that's what I mean by die back. And that also happens when it's too cold. Uh, the last one you can remember is it, it can drop its leaves. One of the reasons why is the leaf itself has lots of different chemical reactions. So there are lots of chemical reactions that happen in the leaf, lots of chemical reactions. And these chemical reactions need enzymes for it to, to occur. If it's too cold outside, now they can't sweat, they can't shiver. Um, if it's too cold outside, then they'll just drop the leaves because they can't really, I mean, this leaves can't do its function anymore because the enzymes don't work anymore. So by saving energy, it'll just drop its leaves and then regrow them when it's optimum temperature again. So dropping of its leaves that occurs also when it's too cold. So these are four responses. You don't need to be able to explain them for this dot point. You just need to be able to name them. But I think it's always good to understand why they occur. So late seed germination, broad leaves die back when it's really cold and dropping of the leaves. These are four for when it's too cold. And when it's too warm, you've got some different ones. We have also like when it's too cold, delayed seed germination. So just when it's too cold and too warm, it's going to wait a while until it comes out of the seed because it needs to have that optimum temperature for it to be able to grow properly. Vertically hanging leaves. What I mean by that is, is actually this here is two different leaves. One is horizontal, so H is for horizontal. The other one, V, is for vertical. And what you can imagine is we've got the sun on top here. If it's going to shine, it's going to fully hit this leaf, whereas the other leaf, it's only going to expose the top because the bottom is hidden from the sun. So a vertical hanging leaf will have this whole area not being warmed up. So no sun exposure to this area. It's just going to get that top being hit. And that's good when it's too warm because it wants to make sure that it's not that much heat coming because enzymes won't work properly. So it's only going to have the top part being warmed up and the bottom is going to be uh, not warmed up, whereas the horizontal leaves, which we can find in more cold climates, will get the full exposure of the leaf itself. Now we also have something called the narrow leaves. Now narrow leaves are um, just compared to broad leaves, so again narrow means refers to the width of it, so this part. And with narrow leaves, what you can imagine if you've got the sun which hits it, but because it's narrow there's not that much surface area, so there's less heat being produced compared to the broad leaf. And it's good when it's too warm because you want to have less heat because they're warm enough. So these are adaptions for um, plants in Australia mostly, narrow leaves. Also, we've got leaves that curl up. So for example, the spinifex plant has these leaves, these grass leaves that can curl up. And what that means is the sun itself will only hit the outside, the parts that are inside that curl up. So the curled up parts, curled up parts, are not exposed to the sun. So they don't get warmed up. Only the parts on the outside get warmed up. And again, that's good when it's too warm because it doesn't want to get more heat. So by doing this, you'll only get some exposure, not full exposure to the sun. Also shiny or reflective, or reflective leaves. These are the leaves which oh, we can also find in quite a few in Australia. And what that means if they're shiny or reflective, that means if the sun comes, instead of absorbing all that heat, it's actually going to reflect it. So it's going to hit and reflect hit and reflect. And that means, again, less heat absorption, so less heat absorption. And that means we have less heating up for the leaf itself. And that's good when it's too warm. And the last one was the leaves of the leaf orientation, they change, or the, it's, called, it's called the moving leaves. So it might be during the times when it's really sunny, they might be facing away from the sun, but the sun changes its, its actual position during the day. So it might be somewhere else at lunch or at night, and the leaves will actually constantly move. They won't be visibly, they won't move really fast, but they move slow enough to make sure that they don't get, they stay in the shade almost. So they always look for the shade. And when the sun moves, they move to make sure that they're away from the sun. And this also produces less heating up because it's always in the shade. And less heating up means its temperature stays more or less normal. And so these uh, were the temperature uh, responses for when it's too warm. Delayed seed germination, same reason why when it's too cold. Vertically hanging leaves, these are these ones, as opposed to the horizontal leaves. Narrow leaves, which means less surface area exposed. Leaves that curl up, which means the insides are hidden from the sun. Shiny leaves, which means that they reflect some of the sun, sun rays, which means less heat absorption. 
and leaf orientation or moving leaves. Uh, that means the actual leaves constant change in the data position of the leaves to try to stay in the shade to, whilst the sun is moving. Now these were some of the adaptions and also I'm going to name a specific example which is the eucalyptus tree. So this is a Australian tree and in the last dot point you actually need to name an Australian, all Australian organisms, so we said the ectotherm and the endotherm, but that also includes trees as well because or an organism is just anything that's living. So Australian organisms include the trees, which in this case is the example would be the eucalyptus tree because that's a very famous one. And the two adaptions that it has to temperature variation are it actually has these vertically hanging leaves, these leaves that hang down like that, and it also has narrow leaves, these ones here. And as you can see that picture, we've got the vertically hanging leaves, the ones that hang down right here, and the narrow leaves. The narrow leaves are the ones which are like this and not broad, not like that. So it doesn't have the broad leaves, it has the narrow leaves, like that. So hope that was useful. But yeah, for this dot point, just remember, you don't have to be able to explain them because it says identify some responses, but remember some of the responses that are named here. And also it would be good if you have one extreme example. So the eucalyptus trees are often very famous and very good to remember. And the two of its responses are vertically hang leaves and narrow leaves. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.